Huntington's disease is a strongly inherited disorder. There's one mutation or a change in a gene that's tied to causing Huntington's disease, and Huntington's disease is caused by this one specific change in a gene. There are other disorders where many different mutations map to the same symptoms and vice versa. Huntington's disease is an unusual case of one disorder, one mutation. And after uh, decades of work by lots of different research groups, we know what that mutation is, and we can test for it in a specific individual. So how is that testing generally used out in the world? Well, one common way is if someone has symptoms and the possibility of Huntington's disease comes up, we can use the genetic test to either confirm or deny that their symptoms are caused by Huntington's disease. That's called a confirmatory genetic test. Another common usage is we call pre-symptomatic genetic testing, or some people used to call it predictive genetic testing, where an adult um, is concerned about their at-risk status. They have a parent or another relative who's been diagnosed with Huntington's disease. They know they're at risk, and they want to find out if they have that mutation or not. Currently, we'll only test adults. We don't test pre-symptomatic children. Why? because the vast majority of people have an adult onset of symptoms. That onset can be anywhere in adulthood, 20s, 30s, 40s, averages somewhere, maybe in the 40s, but I certainly diagnose people with new symptoms in their 70s. There are people on record with new symptoms in their 80s. So testing a child and trying to figure out if they have this mutation, there's a lot of ethical concern about how that might affect their lives but yet they might not even have symptoms until much later in their adult life. Um, so for pre-symptomatic testing, we won't test kids. Just adults can make their own decisions. If a child has symptoms, it is possible to have juvenile onset Huntington disease. Roughly 10% or fewer people with Huntington disease have a childhood onset, so it's pretty unusual, but it's definitely possible. And We'll do confirmatory genetic testing, so the child has very concerning symptoms. We want to see if this is really an unusual case of juvenile onset Huntington's disease. That's another use for genetic testing. Talking about adults and then kids brings us to baby making. So lots of people are really concerned about risks for potential kids when they are well aware of Huntington's disease in their family. They want to make some reproductive choices about moving forward whether that's um, adoption, not having biological kids, just having biological kids and seeing how that goes, or using genetic testing. So the two ways that we use genetic testing in this setting are prenatal testing, where the woman is already pregnant. We can test the fetus. I really strongly urge people not to consider this unless terminating the pregnancy is a choice for their family and it's something that they would really consider doing um, if they found that the mutation test was positive. Why? Because we don't test pre-symptomatic kids. So if you're already pregnant, you know that you're definitely not going to terminate the pregnancy. That is just not a choice for you. Then there's no role for genetic testing anymore. Some families choose to do genetic testing before they even get pregnant. So how do you do that? Well, you do in vitro fertilization and something called pre-implantation genetic testing or genetic determination. It's also called PGD. So you go to an in vitro fertilization center and you make a bunch of frozen embryos, so outside of the body, and you can test embryos when they are still only a few cells big and look for specific mutations. In this case, you look for the mutation that could cause Huntington disease, and then you only implant, that's why it's pre-implantation genetic testing, you only implant embryos that are negative for the mutation. If you choose to go this route, this is quite doable. Some of the upsides are that you can guarantee that you have a biological child that does not have the mutation for Huntington disease. Some of the downsides are that it involves some medical risk for both mom and potentially for the kids. For people who are parents who don't yet know their own genetic status, you might figure out that one of the parents is, has the mutation because some of the embryos have the mutation. Or you can try to blind it. 
so that you know that you have a mutation negative baby, but you just tell the IVF center you don't want to know if there are any mutation positive kids. So you don't want to know the parent status.